I I didn't. I heard Patrick talk to Gail about it, so I decided to listen to it too. I don't know. You didn't post anything, so I I listened to the November second YouTube. Uh, <clears throat> no, I didn't post anything. What I I I knew that uh, Gary and uh, I think it was Gary who brought it up to him. I don't remember yeah. who did it. <clears throat> I haven't had a chance to listen to it. What was on What was on there? Oh, he was just talking about doing def- declarations and doing affidavits and okay. uh, how we're part of the crown. I guess we're the crown and the, they're our agents and that type of thing. Or like um, what Patrick says, we're the sovereignty of the sovereign. We're of the right. land. He was saying the same things Patrick did. I I didn't learn anything really new that Patrick already said. Yeah, I, I things, don't think like, Patrick... You know, Patrick already covered everything he talked about. Right. Okay. I just listened to it because uh, it was mentioned. Well, Patrick says he he may have spoken to the guy previously. He doesn't remember remember him specifically, but he has a vague recollection that he has this talk with him. Yeah. So I, I, I sent him off a He's couple from of. New Zealand. I think they're trying to do the same thing down there. Well, if it if it can work there, then it'll work in Canada, and it can work in Australia. Yeah. And it, it, that means Santos Bonacci can get a handle on this too. I think that was from a couple years ago. It was posted recently, but I think it was an older video. Yes, it was an older video. I think Please. it was about this two years old. Like yeah. But I I sent Patrick a couple of flashcards with that stuff on it. That was okay. people were talking about. Yeah. Did I read something about someone was very sick? Is that you, Tom, or was it somebody else that's very sick? Um, I think Darlene is having problems. I don't know expe- exactly what they are. I couldn't follow the email. I hope she feels better. No, she has pneumonia. Oh, my goodness. She has what? Pneumonia. Pneumonia. Wow, that's not good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That liquid oxygen you can get at the health food store is really helpful with that. Just like a liquid, you drink it. Yeah, it's almost like hydrogen peroxide drinking that. Right, yeah. Yeah. So. You don't drink it straight, but you mix it up in right. water, and that puts a little more oxygen into the blood system. And I was telling someone um, here just a couple weeks ago that the mustard packs, I know it's very old-fashioned and primitive, but it is very effective. It, it, it draws out somehow whatever's in there. It actually draws it out. Now, well, turpentine's another one. Okay, and see, mm-hmm. that comes from trees. Okay, uh-huh. not not the not the turpentine you get from coal, but the turpentine you get from trees. Mm-hmm. Okay, hmm. that's interesting. And uh, oh. see, everything basically when it comes from the plant life, uh, basically that's where all of our remedies were really exactly. at. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, just I like agree. the apple a day keeps the mm-hmm. doctor away. You're supposed to eat the seeds, too, because you grind the seeds up, and that is uh, the amount of uh, strychnine that you need to combat uh, cancer cells. I didn't know that was in it, but that's what I do in smoothies. I grind it all up because I know it's good for you. I didn't realize that it was strychnine. That's interesting. Yeah, you basically have to eat the the seeds in the apple, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't do this with apricot seeds because that's just a little too much arsenic in the seeds. Right. But the apple seeds are small enough that basically that's uh, just right. the right amount that you need to uh, uh, combat. That's why they always said an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Yeah. Well, well I mean, there are right. yeah, right. remedies out apple. here that basically people, uh, if they just think back on some of their stuff, hey, the remedy's been there. Why don't you go back and listen to the old sayings that people used to use? Exactly. Well, they changed it because of the money and the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that spirit of 
from Ikea. Making the money and all that. You got the recording going, Tom? Yes, I got it. I got it going. Yes. Okay. Hi, Patrick. Hi, right, Steve. Do you talk to Gail? Yeah, she called me up and told me she's like uh, that she had talked to you and that um, you you guys or Thomas was going to post uh, something about Bill Turner or you had learned something, but I don't. Uh, I'm going over a bunch of find. words tonight, okay, that people yeah. need to know, okay, and Good basically work. it's been sitting right there uh, in the dictionaries. This whole damn answer to this whole thing has been in the dictionaries, nowhere else. Okay? You're not going to find it anywhere else. But it's in the dictionaries. If you constantly bombard the dictionary and utilize it uh, to try and find the answers. Right. I've been thinking there was something with that bill of awaiting um, before you posted this. I had researched it before, but I really was sure how exactly to apply it, you know, in practical well, it's, yeah, it's The bill of lading is just a minute part of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Okay? I think there's it's a lot. It's really about it. bonds and about notes. Well, yeah. And it's about post-obit, O-B-I-T, bonds and post-obit notes. The certificate of live birth is a post obit note. O B I T basically uh I don't know whether it has any correlation or not, but basically the Lord of the Rings. The mm-hmm. Hobbits. Okay, you take the H off of Hobbits mm-hmm. and basically you get Obit. Or Hobbit. Mm-hmm. And basically the hobbits were the ones that were going after the hobbits were going after the gold. And see, that's what we're trying to get is our assets back. And a post obit is basically a dead entity. And see, our fictional person, he has died. He died, okay, He has been in the office of the dead at sea ever since he turned 25, or for a military, 21 for the certificate of live birth. For the baptismal certificate, it should have been around the age of 12 or 14. This is all under maritime law. And in the United States, we have a special maritime law system compared to what England and uh, what is on that audios or that video out there, the, they're talking about admiralty. Everything in New Zealand, Canada, and England is in admiralty. But that is also maritime. Okay? Mm -hmm. And maritime law, it says, if you go into Ballantyne's Dictionary, maritime law, the second item in there, the United States has its own system of maritime law. Well, here in the United States, there are basically five well-known armed forces. But there is a fifth, a state of armed forces of military establishment. The four that everybody knows about is the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard. But even in the definition, it has etc. Well, the etc. is 
the merchant marines, mm. the merchant vessels mm. out here operating in maritime law. And see, a merchant vessel can be armed. And basically those courthouses are armed with the U.S. Marshals. So, that is our fifth estate of the armed forces, is the maritime uh, merchant marines. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Now, what courts do they take you into if you're in the service? They take you into a court martial. Court there are three court. categories of court martial a general court martial, a special court martial, and a summary court martial. The general court martial takes at least five judges. The special court martial basically uh, takes three commissioned officers or judges. The summary court martial, which normally is the one that everybody goes to, only has one judge or one commissioned officer. in the process. So that's what basically you're going in in all your court cases, traffic tickets, whatever. You're going in in a summary court-martial under the Merchant Marine. Mm. Okay? Maritime court system. Mm. Okay, so that's where that all comes into play. You go through a bunch of these definitions, and I mean look all the things up about military. Now, I was talking uh, previously about weddings. Well, lo and behold, there is one in the military, a military wedding. A slang term for a wedding under duress of threatened prosecution for seduction or bastardly. With the Y, not the L-Y. And see, that's what you basically created was a bastardly uh, child. So you ended up getting into a military wedding under duress. You didn't have any say in the matter. I'll send Tom a copy of these definitions and then commercial frustration, commercial impracticability, okay, which is the same, pretty much the same as commercial uh, frustration, and then commercial law deals with merchants and insurance. So that's maritime law. They get you into a voluntary pennage, P-E-O-N-A-G-E. -E. I probably didn't pronounce that right. Yeah, pennage. That's what it is. Okay. P or D? Yeah, you can look it up. Okay. P for penalty. Yeah. Okay. Scapegoat. Shanghai. Okay. You can look all these things up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fit it into your understanding of what really is taking place here. Letter of credit, okay, is basically the same thing as a commercial letter of credit. A public bond, okay, 
a bond issued by a state, municipality, or other public body, usually, although not necessarily under seal, constituting a promise binding the obligor, the state, to pay a sum of money to the holder thereof or the bearer, that's you, were made payable to order or to bearer having all the qualities of commercial paper. That's what a public bond is. And then you have a public bonded warehouse. And the public bonded warehouse is basically the custom house at the federal courthouse. You have a public note, a note for money borrowed by a public body. Usually payable and issued to a single investor or maturing at a date earlier than a bond issue. And you can look up bond issue. And then basically we had public credit where you have seals of public credit. A document that has the great seal of the United States, the great seal of the state, or seals of the court of record, or other seals which of which judicial notice is taken. That would be like getting a seal from the county recorder's office on a certified copy of a document. Your certificate of live birth is under the state great seal. DD-214s, if you process them into the county recorder's office in the military discharge book, you get a certified copy of that. You get a county recorder's seal on that, and basically that is uh, there again, a seal of public credit that is owed to you. And I've told you this before. Whenever you get into a definition, always look up what the other words mean. Like judicial notice. Judicial notice of Foreign Law Act. One of the uniform laws. The UCC. See right there, it tells you that that is a Foreign Law Act. The UCC. The, the answer to a lot of the questions and everything that people have is in the dictionary if you just look. In Ballant Times, you look up Bond Post Obit. Bond after he has died. A bond given to secure the performance of some act or acts after a certain person, that's your fictional person, shall have died. A kind of bond where the obligor, the state, agrees that in consideration of the payment to him of a sum of money by the obligee, and see, we passed our estate through our person who has now died over to the state as the obligor. Will upon thereof from the estate of, the, of a person now living from whom he expects to inherit, that's you, pay a larger sum exceeding the legal rate of interest. Then you go into uh, Valentine's, Blacks, and Bouviers, and you can find post, obit, note, 
I think it was post but no, it was in Blacks. I don't know whether it was in any of the others or not. But anyway, a post obit note. A promissory note payable a specific time after the death of the maker. The maker was your fictional person. He's dead now. He died at sea. So he's in the office of the dead. Okay, and then basically post obit bond, okay? You can read the different definitions comparing them uh in uh the different the three different dictionaries. O B I T to reach the end in death. And then in blacks, I think it was O B I T in English law, a funeral solemnity or Office of the Dead. Orbiter. Obeter. Okay. On the way. In passing. Incidental. Uh, Curtsy. Courtesy. Uh, C. D. D. I. C. T. A. So you look up that. And then it talks about while mere orbiter is not law of the case, judicial, uh, whatever, uh, is something else. Well, basically you have to put mere and orbit, orbiter together, and basically you end up coming up with, because mere is the sea. So a mere Orbiter is the sea of one in passing. The dead sea. The sea of the dead. So like uh, the river uh, Sphinx or whatever it was where the uh, boatman goes to Hades. That's the sea of the dead. Okay, anybody that has a mortgage, they take one of these certificates of live birth in, they put it as a post-orbit uh, note, and they present it to the court to do a bill, Q-U-I-A, and then the third word is T-I-M-E-T. And that will settle the matter and also uh, stop that bank dead in its tracks. So you can read the definition on that one. The states are not to emanate bills of credit. But they can issue uh, public bonds and public notes, as these basically are items back against our assets that we loan to them to begin with. You can turn around and take one of these certificates of live birth, mark it up for say 25000 or whatever, and take it down to the bank and deposit it as a uh, pay any bank. That's what the words need to be on that document when you endorse it. Pay to any bank. And then it will either be returned after... Uh, its uh, collection is returned to the customer or it's going to be specially endorsed by the bank to a person who is not a bank. And that would be your bank account. You're not a bank, but you have an account in the bank. Well, 
When we go in and close these things down, you mark it, pay in full to discharge an obligation completely. And then a direction respective, respecting a legacy sufficient to exonerate it from the burden of taxes. So you would be exonerating your transfer from any taxes when it is paid in full. You get the money, you owe no taxes on it when you get it out. They had to take it all out. Settle the books before they gave it to you. Because that was part of their obligation. Now there's one word that has O-B-I-T in it, and it is P-R-O-P-I-T-Y. And it stands for justice, honesty. A man of whatever uh, that word is, is one who loves justice and honesty and who dislikes the contrary. The contrary is the commercial usury system. So when you are a pro orbert T, you basically love justice and honesty because you're getting your assets out of their hands. How did I find that one? Basically, I searched through the dictionary. Do a word search to find O-B-I-T. Wow. That's what the damn computers are for, okay? If you want to operate a computer, you better learn how to operate the thing. Otherwise, it's no damn good to you. And you're just sitting there getting a bunch of garbage off the damn internet that's going to keep you thoroughly confused. So basically what I have so far is that we will call this a post obit for the uh, uh, certificate of live birth. It would be a post obit bearer note of public credit under the state of uh, whatever authorized, authorized seal as a maritime consigned bill of lading. And then you're going to take the full payment or full uh, what did I say there? Pay in full uh, discharge of that note. And then it would be coming from the post obit obligators, the United States and the state of wherever you have your certificate of live birth after the maritime merchant warehousemen have deducted and settled all federal, state, federal and state assigned salvage liens, warehousemen liens, and custom fees for this post-orbit estate account. And then basically I pulled some of the stuff off the document that I had. It was the template that I was going to put on the back of the certificate of live birth and uh, the uh, DD-214, and I moved it to a separate page. So that separate page will be like your cover sheet 
that you're going to be presenting to uh, the clerk of the court and to the county attorney if you send it into the county court system. If you go to the federal court system, uh, you would just uh, you'd be addressing that this is going to the clerk of the court, but also to the U.S. attorneys, as they are the warehousemen, and they're also the vessel pursers. And then the captain uh, of the vessel is the judge, the chief judge, and he's also uh, the court warden. So all these definitions are there if you know what you're looking at. And see, it's got to go through the port of entry. And that's the, this, that's the federal district courthouse or custom house. For somebody to get naturalized in this country, they have to go through the federal district court that they live in. They don't go off running off to Washington, D.C. or anything like that. I went to a naturalization for two of my, uh, for one of my nieces and my nephew. They both came over from Korea. My sister adopted them. And I went to their indoctrination or their naturalization. Now, at the county level, that is your home port, okay, of discharge at the county that you live in. That courthouse there is the home port of discharge. Now, you have a port also, and your address is a port of on livery, UN livery, okay, and that's your delivery point. You would think it means something different than what it says, but you can look up what Port of Unlivery says or Unlivery says in the dictionary. And see, that's the final destination port. You're the consignee in this process. Okay, and they see the state obligator, and you're also the obligee. And the state is the consign or and the obligors. I don't know what else I can say about the thing. It's too damn simple. So you get in and look up these words. And basically, you should start seeing some of this stuff. Pull them down. Copy and paste them onto a Word document. And then highlight different items in that so that you get a good understanding. You keep that for your record. I will send a copy of this out. But it's about time you guys started doing a little of this work yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, any questions? Go ahead. <clears throat> so it it it's it, it seems very much like uh what you last put in in there, but we've adjusting some of the terms on, on these bonds, on these uh, uh, redeemable bills of lading. Yes, you have to correct the terminology. Okay, you right. have to make the terminology correct to fit the situation. And we have uh, that's uh, one of the things that we've been missing. We haven't had all the correct terminology when we sent this stuff in. 
People got, tried to go to the bank and do this, but they didn't know what they had to have on those damn uh, certificates of live birth to deposit them into the bank. When you mentioned there would be no um, tax liability on that one, would that apply to anything else you would like to the um, other instruments and, and such? or Such as what? Well, like um, the, the driver's license or an insurance policy or um, registration. Well, not reg- I guess not registration. Uh, if you have a straight insurance Social- policy... You turn around and get that out of that damn insurance company and shut it down. You don't need any damn stinking insurance. You well, have I the agree. biggest insurance policy out here. Well, I, I agree that you don't need it. Yeah. Um, shouldn't have now, it. for the driver's license and stuff like that, you can turn around and send that in to uh, the county uh, courthouse and basically to the cashier and say, I am cashing this driver's license out. Right, so, and if you cash it out, there should be no um, tax liability, I guess, is where I was... No, you have to make the statement that basically the warehouseman, the county attorney, has to make sure that all the salvage and the warehouseman liens and the custom fees are taken out before you get the residue. Right. No. See, they're the ones that are the obligation, okay? They're the obligators. Right. You can send your driver's license, your traffic tickets and everything else up to the federal court if need be. Hmm. Say, here, you guys pay these damn things. I sent seven uh, IRS bills. I don't know whether there's any, anything due on them or whether they're just threatening letters, whatever. But I just wrote on the outside and said, this is your obligation. You settle the damn thing and send them up to the chief judge up there at my federal district. And I haven't, and he, basically they were turned turned over to the U.S. Marshals, and I haven't heard anything from it, and that's been well over three weeks. Yeah. See, when you stand up and act like you're in charge, and see, one of the key things in that definition, okay, of, uh, let me see, where the hell is it? Okay, D I C T A. Well, you go on down and then you put a T O R behind it. What do you have? Dictator. An absolute ruler, answerable to no other power or authority. You're the dictator over your estate. You don't answer to them. They have to answer to you. And didn't didn't they have just three days to do that or whatever you say is as you say? You get it done as soon as you can, okay? Normally, they've given you 30 days to have this bills and everything else set off when they send you the bills. Right. I mean, ma'am, that you, once you've given, turned things over to them and, and, and put this in, that they have three days to respond, correct? They have three days to respond. You know what right. role that comes under? I don't remember, but I know that that's Thank what you. it says. Three Thank days. you. I had that somewhere. Where in the hell did I have that? Regulation Z. Z? No, it was something else. I don't remember that. Okay. Process in REM within three days' time of delivery. Right, right. So since they didn't respond to you, like with that other, when you sent that in, they had three days. So, oh, well, too bad. Well, but I didn't have it right. Oh. Okay? Yeah. See? That's why we don't hear some of these things. Because we're missing something. When you don't hear in three days' time, you know you better damn well know that you did something wrong. (laughs) 
Well, it like on that um, declaratory judgment, apparently, and I've heard this and read this a couple places, that um, if you don't hear back on that, you probably won't when you're you're making those kind of claims because they don't want it to be on the record and that type of thing. That's in a, you know, court setting. Yes. Like now, that. if you're just having something set off, yeah, they probably won't come back and let you know. Right. But they, if they don't come after you, you know damn well that they took care of it. Right. And you never correspond with third-party debt collectors. Right. If you want to, you call them up and say, basically, you, you can continue to hassle me, and I will file charges against you. So I do not expect to hear from you again. Because, see, that is a salvage lien that that third-party debt collector is trying to place against your account. They are mm. a salvager. Interesting. Yeah. You guys want out of the system? Take the time and start learning this, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, you can turn around, you get this figured out, and by Monday morning, you should, if you're right close there, you should either be able to walk one of these right into your bank and deposit it for $10,000 or whatever, 25000 if you've got a clear copy of a certificate of live birth. Or if you understand the whole process, get it sent out. Either have it processed through your county court and have them direct it up to the federal court. Because, see, all these county courts, courts, vessels, are tendered to that federal district tendering ship. Just like when I was in the service. I was in the submarines. And we tied up the tender vessels, okay, which were like a houseboat because people lived on that tender. Also, they had supplies and stores on that houseboat, that tender, and then basically if the ship, uh, if the vessel, the tender, submarine tender was st uh, stationed out in the harbor, there could be as many as eight, ten uh, submarines tied up to her. All in a line. The most I think that we ever had was basically uh, three on a side. Then we had potato fights using our signal flares. <laughs> on the damn thing, shooting the potatoes up and over the tender to the ones on the other side. We used to do a lot of weird-ass shit. I don't know if anyone's tried to do anything like you mentioned at the bank recently. you got to speak up a little. I said, I don't know if anyone on the call has tried to do anything like you mentioned at one of the banks recently, but um, trying to, attempting to. Um, well, they better not have tried anything unless basically they, they're listening to what I'm saying right now. Well. Because they okay. have to call it a post orbit, O-B-I-T, note, and have it deposited under the right terminology at the bank, which is what I said. Basically, right. you have to call out that deposit, uh, pay, pay any bank, and that has to be the words used on that endorsement on the back of that certificate of live birth. When you deposit that into the bank, you're making it payable to the bank. 
then the bank can turn around and process it up to the federal district court. Mm. Or through the state bank system. It's all there. You go through all the payables, you go through all the bills. Look at all the words. I mean, there's a whole bunch of bills, uh, definitions there. But read them all and just highlight the ones that you think are the very important ones that you're going to be operating with. Like bill of debt, bill obligatory. Their contracts, when a merchant, by his writing, acknowledges himself in debt to another in a certain sum to be paid on a certain day or subscribes it at a day and place certain, may be under seal or not. Okay, any other questions from anybody else? Yeah, Patrick, this is Steve. What was that word that you said was uh, DITA, D-I-C-T-A or something, DICTA? DICTA, D-I-C-T-A. Yeah. And the uh, plural is DICTA with no, a dicta. U-M. Dictum is the singular. Dicta is the plural. Dicta is plural? Right. Dictum Dictum is is the plural. Dicta is the single. Okay. Uh, No. Dicta is the plural of dictum. Dictum is the single. Right. It means a saying. Yeah. I was saying a back cast word. Right, right. But it means a saying. Judiciary is the Latin word for to speak. Yeah, and then basically a judicial dicta, sometimes given the effect as a holding court. Then you have to go and look up what holding court says, the act of a judge in presiding over a term or session of court, keeping the court open, the judge and all officers of the court being present. So in some cases, you're going to have a holding court when you bring this thing out. Okay, I understand that. Yeah, which will be held open, and then when you bring in your uh, receipts for transportation, they will have to process them. So you've got to sort of read between the lines of what is really being said here because you have to know about maritime and, uh, a, uh, not admiralty, the maritime and merchant law, which is this whole damn thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. I understand. There was a uh, another one was quia temet uh, was that so I understand dictum is a dispute and it's like you're bringing a, a dispute forward is that I'll look up the word I'll just look it up and see what it means what was that other that word was a bill b i l l mm-hmm. and then q u i a was the second yeah. word and right. then t i m e t right and see that's a bill that you would submit into the court to do a set-off for, like, a mortgage. Okay. And therefore, you quiet uh, the other party in the matter. Okay. 
It's also called a uh, quieting, uh, a bill of peace, or a quieting title. Bill of Peace, okay. Now, see, you're you're presenting a bill to make the payment mm-hmm. in the process. And then basically you turn it over to the purser, the maritime purser, to uh, basically prosecute it to its settlement, the county attorney or the U.S. attorney's. You don't argue with these guys. You give them what they need. Then they can't perform a summary court-martial against you. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. I get it. So we think we're civilians, and we're we're really not. We're still in the system. We're still like... uh, under this Libra code or whatever. No, we're not. No? Okay, that's total bullshit. Uh, okay, I, I'm just wondering, like, you're talking about a court-martial, and it's a summary court-martial. Yes, they try and come in, but we stand out here as the dictator, okay? Right. The mm-hmm. one of absolute authority. We give them the bill that they need to have to set it off. Under this post-orbit note or post-orbit bond from our dead person. We're now claiming our property back, but we're going to use some of that to set off any bills that basically are sitting there. Okay. Yeah, I'll listen They're to the you. obligator. Now, you've just turned the table on them. We're the obligee. Yeah. They're the one that's under obligation to make the settlement now. When we give them the instrument to make the settlement. But we haven't been given the instrument to them in the right format. Right. Right format. And then basically, uh, we haven't done a uh, process serving on them to get it into their hands. They say, well, I'm not going to take that. Well, basically, you are going to take that. If nothing else, I'll go get the sheriff, and I'll have him serve it to you. Mm -hmm. Then you've got a living person to attest, and he's got it in his records of doing the process serving. Right, you 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 talked about that last call. Yeah, I've had sheriffs serve it on judges, both in my county and the next county over. Mm-hmm. Costs a little more to have it done in the next county over because they have travel time and everything. I think it cost me sixty-five dollars to have it done in the next county over, whereas only ten or fifteen dollars to have it in the right here in town. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions on this? And the okay. term "quia teamet" actually huh? in Latin means. The term quietimet, Bill quietimet, quietimet means because he fears. He fears something is going to happen to him. Right. That's why you give them the bill. Right. You're in fear that basically the bank is going to take the house away from you. Yes. So you put the bill up until basically it is properly settled. I don't have the other dictionaries on me, but I I did find a a good definition online that I just put in the Skype group. 
Quietimet means because he fears or apprehends. A bill in Quietimet is the name given to a bill filed by a person fearing an injury to his right or property, real or personal. Then look it up in the in the law dictionaries, okay? Right. Should have Valentine's, should have Blacks, uh, should be a copy of Blacks fourth or fifth up there. Uh, and also uh, Valentine's, and you, you've got Anderson's out there. Right. Okay? And then there's a whole bunch of other law dictionaries that are out there uh, in the links section to go to. True, yes. What about a bill for reformation, a bill seeking the correction of an error in a deed or other written instrument for the mortgage? No, you basically do what I told you here, these post-orbit notes. You look that up, and basically you'll see that that's all you need. Okay. The post-orbit note or the post-orbit bond. Because that is right there. It says everything what that certificate of live birth did. And that person is dead. We've tried to get him killed off, but he died at the age of 21. We just now have to come in and call it a bond post-orbit or a post-orbit bond. And nobody's been calling them these. Mm -hmm. That's why nobody got these things processed through. Yeah, you called it a post-orbit note a little while ago, but a, a bond is... Uh, um... It is basically for the DD-214. Right. Right. The post-orbit note is normally for... But basically, they're pretty much the, the same scenario. Like it's an account. Yeah. Yeah. And see, it can be a bearer bond. Uh, that uh, certificate of live birth can be a bearer bond instead of the full promissory note. Okay? Yeah. The bearer bond is a, uh, you have, uh, you get a, like a, a coupon. Right. For a bond. And you tear it off and basically you, you cash in the coupon. Yeah. But you're still holding the bond. But there's no record you of totally it. totally close it down or the note. Mm -hmm. Right, and on bearer bonds, they don't have to have a record of it. Yes, they do. Oh, they do? Oh, okay. Yes, they have a serial number on them. Oh, okay. Or they will put one on them, okay, mm -hmm. when they process it through. Now, on the DG-214, I don't think they will. Okay. Because, see, that's almost like an open-ended item. Yeah, for your lifetime or your wife's lifetime. Right. Yeah, I understand. Um, okay. I'm going to mute. But you get this one with the certificate of live birth, then if you have a selective service account, then you can go after that and check it out. Because now you've got acknowledgement that you know what the shit you're talking about. Same thing on your parents' uh, death certificates and stuff. Mm. But you do yours first. Right. You get yourself established first. Then as soon as you have your establishment and you have your feet on the ground, then you will basically have uh, additional support from them. Because you just did something right. So they just might help you the rest of the way. Hey, Patrick, I worked at a guy's house that was a judge, and there was all kinds of sayings on, on pieces of art, you know, that were framed in his hallway or in his laundry room and something that were in Latin, and I thought, wow, that's like, that's a whole other language. They're keeping it all to themselves, you know, or it's 
it's for their amusement or for their reminding or whatever whatever reason that he posted things like that but um it is a separate language like just like codes is it's a secret code it's a secret language so people well, can figure it out well it's not a secret language okay it's not it's, yeah we and, can look in it a lot up, of right? these cases those definitions that he probably had there are in uh the dictionaries mm-hmm. yeah but it's not the, mac- the maxims yeah and basically that's all under roman law and basically they they kept them that way so that basically they could not get polluted by the babble of words that basically was brought about by English uh, bullshit, mm-hmm. the English language. Yeah, kept it kept it um, lean and to the yeah, to the core to the bone in a more pure fashion. Mm-hmm. Right, it was the international commercial language that everyone was expected to know, so they could communicate. Right. And at one time, Latin was a requirement in a lot of the schools in this country. I I've, been, I've been thinking about bringing them a bottle of wine and go up there and talk to them a little bit. Well, do that after you get yourself out of the system, okay? Right, no. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Because he ain't going to talk to you while you're still in the system. That's for sure. Yeah, he's under a code of silence. But if you have broken that silence, then he can communicate with you. When you say broken the silence... Think about these things logically, okay? Yeah. I know when you say breaking the silence on our end, it's like that's because you learned or discovered something that he doesn't have to teach that you already you already went over yeah. the fence on. Yeah, right. you just took a hacksaw and you cut that bar that is between you and him. Mm-hmm. You just broke out of jail. See, there's a lot of different connotations that you can put mm-hmm. into how this whole thing is played out. Mm-hmm. Okay, any other questions? If not, study the words. Uh, I'll try and get copies of these definitions maybe up to Tom tomorrow and uh, uh, the templates. Try and work on those tonight and sort of give you guidance on the template. Great, Patrick. Thank you. Okay. Okay. See you. Okay. Okay. Bye. You guys take care. Good learning. Bye.